Hey, 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 this is Rosa RCG Creations. I'm bringing you a recipe on making your own granola. So right now I'm melting my butter along with my honey. And in the description box, like usual, I'll go ahead and put in the full description. And I will also, the recipe and everything on how to do step-by-steps. And if I remember, and I'll try to do this, is I'll... I have it all written down and I'll take a screenshot of it so that way I can post it on here and you can just screenshot it. I won't take a screenshot of it. I'll take a photo of my handwritten directions and uh, that way you can just screenshot it and save it to your phone for future reference. Okay. We're waiting for the, all the butter to mix. Okay, it's pretty much done. Let me leave this here for a second. And I just used a wooden spoon because it was easier. And I can let it rest. See how it, see how it rests? And it just drips. So, let's get to the mixing. I'm walking you over to my table. Bear with me. I'm one-handed here. I've got, I went ahead and got all my ingredients together. I'm just moving a bunch of things out of the way. And I'm going to bring you... Okay. Here we go. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I hope I'm in frame, but if not, that's okay. Alrighty. Now, whenever I put my oats because I buy in bulk. I fill up my jars. And as you can see here, this one's been vacuum packed. See, it doesn't... If you pick it up by the seal, and if it doesn't come up, that means it's a good seal. Plus, if you push down your finger, you push down, and if it doesn't make no pop-pop-pop noise, that means it's a good solid seal. And this is in my half-gallon jar. No, excuse me, a gallon jar. You know, I think... I think that is a half a gallon. I could be wrong. I forget. And here's my quart jar. Now this one is regular oats. The regular oats, the regular rolled oats are bigger. The instant quick oats are smaller and they don't take as long to cook when you're cooking them on the, in the, on the stove top or in the microwave. But I like to mix them both together because they're going to get toasted anyway so it doesn't really matter. So... And then whenever I have anything left over, if it comes in a bag, I leave it in the bag. And if it doesn't, I put it in my Ziploc baggie. But this is one of my vacuum bags, which is where I carry extra. Because we use a lot of oats here. So I vacuum pack anything extra into my vacuum bags. So that's what this is. And then I just wash it out, let it air dry, and then I refill it the next time I need. I have a little bit extra that won't fit in a jar. And then I just keep it in a Ziploc baggie until I use it, which will be used probably more than likely within two weeks of when I put it in the baggie. So it does not sit very long. Okay, this recipe calls for four cups of rolled oats. So here's two. And I'm doubling this recipe. Uh, because uh, I'm re I really love my yogurt and granola in the morning for breakfast. And I've been out of granola for about three weeks now, so I'm ready to eat me some granola. <laughs> okay. This has got a good seal. Hear that? Nothing's there, so. Did you hear that? And I spilled some of my stuff, but that's okay. I'm good to go. So, that's that was two. I need a total of eight cups. So, I'm going to quit talking so I don't lose track.
the suction was so good for the vacuum packing, it spilt everywhere. <laughs> but, 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 but that's okay. My husband's going, oh God. I, I, I am, I'm sorry, but I've told you in many, many of my videos, I'm messy. I don't know why. And I, th I know, I know what it's why. It's because I am not a cook or a baker, but at the age of 60, I've said, you know what, it's about time I start learning. Plus, it's also almost close to my retirement. So when I retire, I always told myself when I retire, that's when I'll learn how to cook and bake. <laughs> and my husband goes, you're right, did you hear him? But I'm actually getting pretty good at it. And you know, the simple fact is, the main reason why I'm doing it now is I'm actually enjoying doing it. Before, I despised it. I mean, I, I, I would rather clean toilets than do cooking or baking. Just a tad more. And you want to get as good as possible. Oh, here's my little ring. I could use my ring. Because this is going to get washed. Put that in the dishwasher and wash that. Now, always when you do this, Wipe down the rim because you know there's particles from the powder of the oatmeal. So always wipe that down and just wipe them down. You just want to get the main particles. And you, if you're not going to use this for a while, go ahead and back and seal it again. But I know this is going to get get into within probably this weekend. Because I'm thinking I'm going to be making some cookies, some oatmeal cookies. I've been wanting this up for a couple of weeks and we haven't had any in months, months, months. Okay. So that is eight. I've doubled my recipe. And let me give you the whole entire recipe. The recipe calls for, excuse me, I'm sweating. Four cups of rolled oats, two thirds cup of brown sugar, three teaspoons of cinnamon, one teaspoon of nutmeg, one half cup of butter, one fourth cup of honey or a guava or any other sweetener you want to use. One fourth cup of any type of nuts of your choice. You can chop them up whole, whatever. I'm personally choosing not to have any nuts. I have some pecans and I have some walnuts, but and I also have some uh, sliced almonds, but I'm not going to do any of that because I like my granola just to granola and the oats, well, the, the seasonings and the flavorings. I love put the, the nuts in there, but my next batch will probably be with the nuts. Or I might even just half it and do half of it regular granola and the other half with nuts, but I really don't care to do that. I might or might not, but I'm not going to this time. You want to preheat your oven at 300 degrees. You want to get your butter and your honey and heat it in a saucepan, which I showed you already. And then you want to mix everything up together, all the ingredients, the rest of all the other ingredients. And then we're going to smooth in a smooth, smooth spoon in, <laughs> spoon in, one more time. We're going to spoon in and mix everything up together with the butter and the honey. Okay, so here is my sugar. Now, again, I did double everything up. And then this is my, I don't know if that's my cinnamon or nutmeg, I don't know what, but that's okay. And then this, oh, this is the cinnamon, that one was nutmeg. And that's all the ingredients. That's everything. Let me get that out of the way there. So now let me just, I forgot my spoon. Let me go get my spoon, I'll be right back. because I know it won't take me long I'm gonna brought my butter my pot of butter okay so now I'm just gonna mix everything up and I got me one of these great big old mixing bowls at the we went to the Mexican grocery store I don't think it's so much Mexican they just have a lot of Hispanic products in there and you want to mix it up really well. I'm using a wooden spoon. And this one is from the Pampered Chef. Um, I'm just using this mainly because when you get it out of the oven, you let it cool down. You want to scrape it. And I like this in for the scraping part. Now I've got some brown sugar that's got little clumps in it. But 
as soon as you touch it, it falls apart. And you want to you want to crumble those up. Okay. Just so you don't bite into a big old chunk of brown sugar. And you can do this with a whisk. You can do it with a spoon. You can do it with your hands. It's totally up to you. But make sure you go all the way to the very bottom because a lot of the cinnamon and nutmeg may settle to the bottom. And you can probably see through here the container. If this is a see-through one. Yep, see to sure enough, look, all this all the seasonings set, settled to the bottom. So I'm um, I mean bringing them from the bottom and spooning it out to the top because I want to make sure it all mixes pretty well. You want to make sure this is mixed really, really good before you add your honey and butter, melted butter mixture. Okay, so that looks good to me. Put this over here, and then I'm going to spoon this. It's kind of warm, but not too warm, because this is a little cheapy plastic. But it should be okay. I'm going to get all my little dribbles out. And then now we just want to mix it all up. And you want to make sure it's all mixed really, really well. And I'll bring the camera up to you so you can see it. Yeah, you really got to go in there and look to make sure that it's all well mixed and incorporated with all the butter and the honey. Mm, I wish you could smell it because it smells good. You can smell the butter. You can smell the cinnamon. You can smell the nutmeg. And of course the oats. But it smells good. And then uh, when you take it out, one quick little tip. If you like little big size pieces, when you break it, if you get yourself uh, like an ice pick. I use these uh, metal skewers that we have. And I poke it, and I just barely, barely push down on it, and it uh, crumbles into little bite, bigger bite-sized pieces. And that's what I put in a separate container. And then those are like my snack. It's better, it's better to snack on something like this than to be snacking on candy bars or chips. And it's good for you. The honey and the butter, you know, but you remember you didn't use a whole lot. We only used uh, one half cup of butter. And remember, this is double doubled recipe, so, you know, the single recipe well, should last you a good two weeks as long as you put it in an airtight container. And I have this glass jar that has an air screw top lid. So I'm pretty sure... It'll last me. This is my first time making this particular recipe. I've done some other ones before, and they've always lasted a good two weeks without turning in. The reason they turn on you is because of the butter. Now, you could put it in the fridge, but you don't really have to because you baked it. So, but I'm going to be honest with you, I sincerely doubt this will even last two weeks because I'm pretty sure I will eat the whole thing a lot sooner than that. Now, Hubby eats granola, but not, he doesn't like it near as much. He likes it. He just doesn't really enjoy it like I do. I really enjoy my granola. Okay, I think it's pretty darn well mixed up. So now, I'm going to grab my cook. Oh, I forgot to turn my oven on. Now we gotta wait because I forgot to turn my oven on. Hopefully it doesn't turn doesn't take too long. Oh, 
I got two big cookie sheets here. And you put this on an ungreased cookie sheet. Or you can also put um, parchment paper down first and then put this on top. But you know, again, like I said, I'm a messy cook. I always, when I use my parchment paper, I always get the cookie sheet dirty. So, you know, what the heck. I'm going to have to wash the whole pan anyway. And I'm just taking, I'm being a little bit more cautious because i got to wait for the oven. I can't believe I forgot to pre preheat the oven. So I'm just, and you know, I'm, I'm going to smooth mine all the way to the very edge. You want, to, you want to give yourself an even layer. Don't go past the height of your pan, whatever uh, pan you're using. But this is going to get hard and crunchy. And it's all going to stick to each other when it comes out of the oven. And you're going to bake it for 20-25 minutes. I usually do 20 take a look at it open the door I know I have the little window on the glass and the light but I want to see it not through the glass to make sure that it's golden brown when it's golden brown then you know that it's done so and this is my first time making it in this new oven that we've got uh, so I'm pretty sure it's gonna be good to go at 20 minutes not 25 so this particular oven's a lot newer than the other one and it heats, it works properly. <laughs> so, okay, that did good. I want to give myself an even layer. And basically, you're just patting it down and smoothing out because you don't want to see any of the bottom cookie sheet. You want to make sure that it's all smoothed out. to the edges you don't want any exposed cookie sheet okay there's that one now let me go get the other pan because I'm gonna cook both of these at the same time okay so here is Make me hot. <laughs> it's like oh, okay. Now here comes the next. Here comes the second cookie sheet. I could just pour it, but I don't have enough strength in my wrist to do that. So I'm just going to spoon it in. And you saw me do the other one, so I'm, like, I'm doing the exact same thing with this pan as I did with the other one. So I'll bring it back when it comes out of the oven. Okay, we're back. It took my oven. This was on the bottom. It took it 25 minutes. The other one, now the other one was a little bit thicker also, so I have to give that to consideration. And that took that one 30 minutes. But... As you can see, and you, I want, you want to let it cool to the touch. And then I went ahead, just went ahead and, and didn't move all these around. But, but listen, crunch, 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 crunch. And you got a couple of the big pieces like this. So my granola jar. And I don't want to break them any more than they are already. But for me, this is going to make great pieces for my um, yogurt. And then let me do a taste test. Here's a little crunchy one. Mm. Tastes like granola. Give this a thumbs up. Thank you much for, so much for watching. Don't forget to hit like, share, and comment. And become, hit the subscribe, bu subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber. We thank you so much and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.